Hey, Beacon, welcome home to your Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast, where you are challenged to be, do, and have God's best as you thrive on your journey from setback to success. I'm your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'll be guiding you on the journey by sharing tips, tools, and the tea on how I was able to bounce back from escaping death, healing from heartbreak, and finding hope in homelessness. And then I wrote an award-winning book all about it. And shout out to God. Ever since I was courageous enough to share my story, my life and the lives of women around the world have been forever changed. And as a member of the Bounce Back Blueprint community, I'm called to teach you to do the same. So grab your journal and let's build this blueprint. Hey ladies, welcome back for this week's episode of the Bounce Back Blueprint. I'm so excited about our guest who is here to build the blueprint with us this week. She is my phenomenal sister friend, Kristen R. Harris. Let me tell you a little bit about Kristen. Kristen subscribes to the notion that every woman is full of potential and purpose, but many lack the knowledge on how to get everything out that is inside of them. Kristen Kristen helps draw it out by equipping them with the tools they need to get unstuck. She helps women realize that they are pregnant with purpose and push past their pain to deliver everything promised to them. As CEO of the Scribe Tribe Publishing Group, Kristen has helped hundreds of people realize their dreams of publishing books. To date, Kristen has authored six, yes, six books of her own and is always pinning the next page turner. That is the truth. (laughs) She is the host of the acclaimed God Put Me Up On Game podcast, where she shares her raw truths and all the good game learned along the way. And The Author's Tea, a platform to give independent women authors greater exposure. Welcome to the podcast, Kristen. Hey, what's going on? I'm so excited to be here. Tiffany, you know I love you. I love you back. I'm so glad you're here. So of course, I read your official bio, but please Introduce yourself to the community. I feel we do the best at introducing ourselves. You know what? I'm just. Mm-mm. What did I Start just again. Say? We don't do just. <laughs> we don't do just. <laughs> we don't do just. <laughs> no, well, well, no. This just probably fits well. I'm just a girl who does whatever God tells me to do. I just told oh, okay. you that I've literally just changed my bio on Instagram to say that I wake up every day and do what God tells me to do. So my bio may change every day. The two things that remain a constant are me being a wife and a mom. Those two things never change. So I'm married to my husband. We've been married for 15 years. And my daughters, I have three girls, three piece spicy, and they're all three different types of spice. Outside of that, um, I just use all of the gifts that God has given me to help women. And, you know, it's really interesting. This has been the first year that I've actually helped men too. So <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that was happening that way, but I've helped uh, a few men this year to work on their books and to publish. So I'm really excited about that as well. So that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. I would agree with that. And I will piggyback off that and say that you using your gifts and doing what God has told you to do is how we actually met. So let me give y'all the backstory. Kristen started a blog called Empower Moments. And at the time I had the scenes from a single mom blog. And I had a friend and she was like, oh, I read this blog. And they said, they're looking for writers. You need to write for this blog. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm barely doing what I'm doing over here. I was very new to blogging. Um, but I was like, okay, what do I have to lose? So I think I had to send an email, maybe a writing sample. Absolutely send a writing writing sample. (laughs) And then I had to have like this panel interview. It's real deep, y'all. And that's how we initially connected via, actually, I feel like there was someone else, maybe Shansay or Carissa, somebody else like screened me. And then there was like a group conversation that included you. And that was kind of the beginning of how we met and that was I want to say in 2011 maybe, maybe that sounds about right 2011 wow we were doing some real extra stuff back then yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yes. I remember you having a panel interview, but that sounds about right. Only because I am very, 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 first of all, thank you for sharing that story because I never know how I meet people. I always forget. So I appreciate that refresher. But um, we probably took you through that process because I am very guarded about when I share platforms with people and the things that I allow to be said over those platforms. As you should. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I protect my babies. I am very, I am a mama bear and I, I hold my cubs very tight to my chest and make sure that when people come before them, but Hey, you passed the test and I'm so happy we're here. <laughs> I did pass the test. And I think too, you know, you were doing your due diligence, but also it's also a way for you to be able to tell, like, if someone isn't really interested or invested in the mission of what you are doing, they're not going to want to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know what to expect going in, but I was, I was very impressed with the process and I'm always up for a challenge. So I was like, oh, okay. He's like, I got it. this. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I think too, that it was a good process because it got me familiar with some of the other women who are already involved in the ministry. You know, that was my initial connection with Shantae, who is also absolutely amazing and the other women who were part of the process so that kind of got me connected so I already felt like I was a part of you know the family from the beginning that's funny you say ministry you know I struggled with that word for a really long time I was like this is not meant please don't call this a ministry Listen. and um, <laughs> because when I hear ministry I just think about Somebody got to be preaching from the pulpit. Well, that's how my mindset used to be. Yeah, um, I do understand now that there is a emerging, especially with the things I know that I do, things that you do, Tiffany. Um, there is definitely an intersection of marketplace and ministry. Absolutely. And in my mind, I thought this is just, and it wasn't even a business at that time. I mean, I, technically, I don't know why I was fighting the word ministry because that's exactly what Empower Moments was. Um, but I think I was just so afraid, like, I don't want to get in the pulpit. I don't want to preach. I don't want to wear a clergy collar. That's what mm -hmm. ministry sounds like to me. But now I understand that even in my business, even in my with my publishing company, that is ministry. You know, I'm I'm ministering to my clients. I'm helping them on their process. We're we're talking about the things that are holding them up. Yeah. What has held you back for so long? And so all of that is ministry. You know, so I. It, I don't know that that word just jumped out at me because I'm like wow back then I would not accept that but today I'm okay with it I probably would not have chosen to be a writer had it been presented to me that way because I was the same way and also for me it was everything you said but also the responsibility you know before I fully understood you know and I'm doing air quotes, calling and like, you know, purpose. It was like, oh, like, that's like a big deal. Like, I don't want the responsibility of having like this God given assignment, but we all have God given assignments, right? One doesn't necessarily have hierarchy over the other. They're all necessary. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. But I want what I, I really want to say, or I want to go back to is that it was a ministry. And at that time, it was almost faceless. You know, like mm -hmm. now marketplace and ministry where they intersect is like all of the lights and your name and your picture. And at that time it was pretty much faceless. We definitely did not have a Zoom panel interview. And I should also point out that I'm based in Pittsburgh. Kristen is based in Chicago. I don't even know where the other ladies were at that time. They, a lot of them were all in Chicago, the but not all of them. I think Sean says like in the South, so we were not on Zoom at that time. We didn't see each other's faces. We were on like a conference call line. Yeah. But that did not have any influence over the strength of the relationships that were formed. And so that's what I really want to talk about. So I want to make sure that everybody sticks a pin in the fact that Kristen and I connected, virtually met between 2011 and 2012, but we did not physically meet until 2019, <laughs> which is so crazy to me because we've been connected and we've just shared and grown through so much together over the course of that seven or eight years, but it was all virtual. And so 
in this day and age, in the midst of the pandemic, if you're listening to this two or three years from now, when Corona is running amok and everybody is like maxed up or in the house and struggling to connect, I want to encourage you, obviously with intention and discernment, to not be afraid of connecting with people online and making friends. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think that is so important to mention that we probably kept kept that connection because we were able to really see I know for me I could see that Tiffany was a good person we were like I I will text her something I'm like we are kindred spirits like we're yeah. walking in the same thing and we're, we're on the same path and I was just able to really as she said discern that she was a good person and someone that I needed to remain connected to and so I will tell people do not subscribe to that that you can't make or make connections, meaningful connections on social media. Um, of course, we didn't make ours on social media, but that's right. where a lot of people will make connections these days. And I do think that um, when used properly, those avenues can work wonders for you um, and, and really create and foster those relationships that to me are divine connections. Because I Absolutely. think- connection absolutely and I think I guess I should have said before the first point if you're taking notes or you're listening to this with intention the first point is to do your due diligence which is what you did when you were inviting people to be a part of the Empire Moments family right it was like Mm -hmm. not necessarily a free-for-all and I don't know that you've had to tell people like and this isn't for you oh I absolutely (laughs) have I didn't mind saying no I didn't mind saying no and you know what I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. (laughs) No, you know, I, um, so we did an Empower Moments book and uh, we we did Empower Moments for the Everyday Woman. And I'm going to say this (laughs) in the most tactful way possible. There were a few people that should not have been in that book. And I did not say my no when I should have said it. I thank God that it still came out the way that, um, you know, it, it still came to a beautiful publication, but I knew deep down, but again, I, I, I was still stuck in my people pleasing a little bit back then. Mm-hmm. And I, I did not say no, because I can think of two or three people out the top of my head that I knew were not supposed to be in that book. But um, you, you, you have to be, like you said, intentional. And you, you have to make sure that you are putting that time in to make sure that you and this person are a great fit and and that it's going to be some give on both ends yes they should be bringing value to your life and you should be bringing value to their life and if it's only if it's one-sided that's going to run out and get old very quickly yes and that's where I was going to go next we'll come back to empower moments book because that's very important but I did want to say that not very long after I joined empower moments you know life started happening. And one thing that I can say, again, we had the connection that we had. Now, I want to also people get people to understand, like, after that acceptance, I started writing for the blog, but there were still, uh, I, I feel like we had a monthly prayer call. And there was also like a meeting about the blog for from month to month and what your responsibility was, right? So there was some ongoing interaction to develop those friendships, those relationships. But also I think what strengthens relationships is when you can entrust someone to grow through a struggle with you, right? And so during the course of the pretty early days of my journey with Empower Moments, two things happen. And I'm only talking about our struggles, not necessarily everybody else's, because I'm sure there were other things that we supported people through. But not very long after I joined the team, my nephew was murdered. I don't know if you remember this, but I was super surprised that I got flowers delivered and a proclamation in the mail from Empower Moments, like from the team. And I'm sure that was under your leadership that you decided we need to do this. We need to support her. Again, never met these people in my life, right? But you have become, you know, my family, right? And then not very long after you had Kai, or you were, even before you had Kai, maybe having complications with your pregnancy and then having Kai. And we had to come together. We rallied around you and we prayed and we supported as best we could from a distance as you were growing through that. And so I think it's important too, to recognize that if you're going to be invested in a relationship, even if it's from a distance, it's not hands off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's very hands on. 
Yeah, you and and when you're at a distance, you got to get creative. You got to figure out how can I be supportive. And so I completely forgot about your nephew, but when you said it, of course, it took me back. And I remember um, getting on the phone with, I'm going to call him my leadership team. I'm using air quotes too, but I, I don't know. We, we were just, I don't know what we were doing back then, but we made it work, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and I remember getting on the phone. I said, we got to do something for Tiffany. And um, so we we drafted up that that proclamation and we made sure that those flowers got there. And to me, it was the, the least I could do because you were sacrificing of your time. You were pouring out to our readers. I, I knew the impact that you were making. Um, every single thing you ever put out was was amazing. But even beyond that, like you said, we have built a connection. And even though, you know, what, it's funny because Chauncey and I talked about it one day. I said, I didn't even know what Tiffany looked like until, until we got connected on social media way down the line. Right. So right. I didn't even know who I was talking to. I, I had no visual. You know, you create these own images in your mind when you're just listening to people. But I didn't even know what Tiffany looked like. But for me, it was important, as you said, to... To, to rally behind my family. This is my Empower Moments family. And uh, I certainly felt the love. I will never forget when, um, the, long story short, Kai's story that she just mentioned, she was born and she ended up having, having to have open heart surgery. And so that was a process. But then there was like months later and she stopped breathing and that was just something. And I remember the Empower Moments team just, rallying around me and offering me their prayers and their encouragement and, and their support. And I mm -hmm. know that that carried me. And like you said, most of these women, well, not most of them, but some of them, I had never met a day in my life. I wouldn't, could they, you could be standing right next to me and I wouldn't know you, <laughs> but yeah. it didn't matter. You guys came together and it was just beautiful. Yes, it, it was. And it, it, it was so powerful to me because sometimes even when you have like your 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 squad of friends or your family members that you're close to, sometimes when we go through things, we think nobody gets it, right? And I think it was so important for me to have like this squad of women in the in the cut, if you will, that nobody else necessarily knew that I had that was just like my secret space, mm -hmm. you know. And it it was very important, and it really impacted the way or where I am now. So you kind of uh, mentioned that you did the Empower Moments book, which I'm sure most listeners know that I contributed to. And I, I just have to pause here and say how, how powerful it is when God connects you to someone. So of course, Kristen is a multiple times author. I'm also more a uh, multiple author. And we've both taken the journey to help other people become authors. But I had no idea back in 2011, 2012, when I started contributing to the Empower Moments blog that it was going to be integral to me becoming an author because before my book was published, the Empower Moments book was published. And so I share how important it was at the onset, I don't know if you remember, I did that live stream about how important it is to sow into someone else's vision before you begin to necessarily build yours because you never know when you're going to reap the harvest, right? Mm -hmm. I contributed to that blog. Like you said, it was free. It wasn't a paid gig. It was something that I wanted to do. And even more so once I got involved that I wanted to do. I had no idea that there would be a return on that investment in the form of me becoming an author and generating income from this book and being able to impact even more lives. Yeah. So I think, again, that goes back to being intentional about the friends that you choose that are aligned the way that you are aligned so that when God is ready to release the harvest, you know that you're receiving it in good company. Hey Amen. That's good. That's good. Wow. I don't have anything to say. That's <laughs> you, you said it all. I don't, I don't have anything to add to that. That's that's it right there. I mean, that's powerful. And I it almost brings me to tears because I think sometimes for myself, I'm I'm very, very, I'm I'm a very driven individual. You know, I'm very I, I tell people I operate at 
at high frequency. I'm always moving. I'm I'm figuring out what the next thing is that God wants me to do. And just to hear you say that, sometimes I don't sit back and and actually realize the impact and the weight of some of the things that I did because you know when it's done, I'm done with it and I move on to whatever the next thing is. But just to hear that that was such an integral piece of you going into your next that really blesses me because that lets me know that it wasn't just, of course, it was a blessing to the readers. We got emails all the time about how people were impacted by the Empower Moments blog. But to hear that even as the writer on this side with us, that it changed the trajectory of your life, you know, in certain ways. And so that's certainly a blessing for me to hear. I, I mean, I didn't, I never thought of it like that, but that's a blessing. All right, well, let me bless you again real quick. <laughs> so, like I said, there were, how many women would you say were contributing to the Empower Moments blog? Oh my God, girl, now you're going to give me the line on here. I don't know. Um, I want to say, because it was a small number, I kept it small intentionally. So, total, I don't think we ever had more than 15 women I don't think we ever got to 20. So I'm going to say somewhere between 11 and 15. It wasn't many. Okay. Well, I cannot, and I will not say that I connected deeply with all 15 of those women because that would not be true. However, there are a few that I did connect with deeply. I mentioned Sean Say and also um, Tanika, right? Yeah. So I think also- Tanika, what, she's the right friend power moment. How did I get connected to Tanika through you then? that um I saw that she that that you were doing your single mom thing and I think I shared that and that's how she got involved yes yeah, she okay. wasn't a writer for empowerment we had a Tanika Tanika was on the admin team but that's a different Tanika okay she okay so I knew yeah. the connection came through you though okay. but so the next point that I wanted to make though is that when you make intentional connections with with other women online or not you also get connected to their network right mm -hmm. so when it came time that I needed to be connected to some women who were um going to be writers in the single mom's book you were able to say okay you need to go over here and see what Tiffany is doing this is something that you can do and I think it's so important to recognize the power of making those kinds of connections mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and it's I let me tell you my face lights up anytime I see people good people that I know and I, I don't like to take the credit I'm not the connector someone called me that today because I, I just was on uh, Facebook and I saw two women that I know came together through my birthing plan um two different two different groups of women um one from one year one from another cohort but they came together and through the birthing plan and to see them together doing service it lit me up. I'm like, yes, that's what this is all about. It's about people coming together. They're meeting, like you said, having access to my network. I tell people all the time, do you have a network if it's not really working? If it's not working for you or the people that are in this network? Because it's supposed to be doing some work. And so when I can bring people together, uh, it just, that, make, that makes me feel so amazing. And I, I love that when I scroll on social media, I can see you, Tiffany, with Siobhan, because that's one of my favorite people, too. I yes. can see you with Tanika. Like, that is like, oh, my goodness. I'm so happy that wherever I was or wherever they were, we were able to bring everyone together. That's that's beautiful to me. I love it. It's like literally seeing the kingdom being built, like yes. literally before your eyes, right? And I think sometimes we take for granted the work, the small things that we could do. Like you simply tagging me or tagging someone else seems like a very small thing, but when you're doing it with intention, and you really know the people you're connecting, that's real life kingdom building on the spot. Absolutely, absolutely. And I tell people all the time, I don't connect people just to be connecting them. Like, and, and if I don't know you are good people, I gotta keep saying that. I'm not mm -hmm. connecting you with anybody in my network. That's even why I take very seriously, you know, when I do business with people and I spend money, um, I'm very cautious about the people that I put in front of because I understand the, the sphere of influence that I've been given. Yes. And I want to make sure that even when I'm connecting people that this is good and this is going to work. And I can't take responsibility for what happens in your relationship, but 
to some degree, I do have a level of responsibility, you know, yeah, so I, I'm really putting cool. my name on the line. I'm, I'm putting my neck on the line and saying, you know what? I think you guys will be a good fit. So I'm really, really, really cautious about that. But I've never, ever say, had to second guess whether Tiffany was the person <laughs> to put into contact with somebody. Never, ever. No, likewise, <laughs> likewise. But I do want to take into consideration that obviously there are some people who are listening who may have had some not so good outcomes from connections made virtually. And so I don't know if you have an experience that you could potentially share that maybe went left instead of right. And maybe the lesson that you could have taken from it. Um, I don't, nothing, I'm gonna be honest. Now, let me tell you this, Tiffany. I just told you my memory, okay? So I probably, even if it was a bad experience, I try to focus on the good stuff that's happening. I really don't recall any experience that I had where it, it was just not a good connection. Um, I tend to think that good good energy, good vibes, good people, they, they attract the same. And, and I'm so, let me say this about myself. I am a really great judge a character only because I and I not in my own my, not in my own right let me let me make that very clear but as long as I can remember I have prayed for three distinctive things and one of them was keen discernment and I know that that manifests in my life and so I like I can see a person and I can hear everything that they're saying and they don't even have to open their mouth because God has just blessed me in that area and so because of that I'm able to weed out a lot of nonsense, a lot of people that, you know what, I don't even need to be connected because there's a lot of people that I see, especially now with social media, you know, we, we see everybody. There's a lot of people that I see and everybody loves them. Now, I love them with the, the love of Jesus, but I can look, I can see right through them and say, I don't want any parts of that. Yeah, I can yes. see right through that. And sometimes I don't even like it. I'm like, I pray for this though. Like I can, as long as I can, I probably probably have been an adult. I have been praying for King discernment mm -hmm. and I see it like, and so sometimes I can look at a person and I'm like, man, everybody loves this person. They're so enamored with the work they do and the, they hang on to their every word. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm not moved at all. And sometimes I don't like it because I, I feel like I'm missing something, but I, mm -hmm. I just trust that if God is showing it to me, it's for a good reason. Like that's just not a person for me. So, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I tell people all the time, like physically, I cannot see. I don't know how much stronger they can make the lenses of my glasses in the years to come. <laughs> my vision is not good, but I can see, right? Mm -hmm. So I have that same kind of discernment. And sometimes it is off-putting because it's like, everybody's like, well, what's wrong with you? And it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, that's that's not for me, I, right? And sometimes you can't put your finger on it. You like, I know it's something, but I can't. <laughs> and then and then it all blows up. You know, this year has really been a year of exposure. Let me tell you, 2020 is ripping the covers off of all of the frauds. And I've I watched agree some more. things. I've watched some things and some people just unravel. And I'm like, this I knew what I saw. And so for years, I've been seeing some of these people, like I said, in social media, it makes it really easy. You know, you see these people and sometimes you begin to make idols out of these people and idols mm. out of their success. And I've always, for with, with a few of them, I'm not gonna call no names, but it's, it's one in particular that's coming to the front of my mind. And I always said, it's something about her. And I even, let me tell you, let me be honest with you. I could, I, I tried to connect with her and work on a project. And when we got off the phone, my spirit was just vet. And I said, you know what? I'm going to leave this where it is because I'm not feeling this for nothing. And here we are, fast forward. That was like 2016. Fast forward 2020 and the covers have just been ripped back and like who she is is being exposed mm -hmm. and for me I'm like man God I, I'm so grateful that I didn't choose opportunity over what you were saying to me because it would have been a great opportunity it would have positioned me but then now who knows now maybe my name would have been attached to scandal and I'm trying to keep my name out of all scandal okay I don't even 
the, the I, devil don't need no help dragging me okay <laughs> i think that's so important that you pointed that out because and and it's a great segue into where i wanted to go because i think that a lot of times when we choose not to collaborate the assumption is that it's because we are competing right mm -hmm. and so if you've heard what Kristen has said she has empower moments she did a compilation i had scenes from a single mom it's now a compilation several volumes so we do a lot of the same work right we both are helping people write books we're helping people get from stuck to unstuck however you want to frame it however even in the midst of everything we've continued to maintain our relationship she refers people to me i refer people to her in fact i'm still learning from her i can't speak for her and say she's learning from me but it's a consistently give and receive relationship mm -hmm. and i think it's important to know that you can be friends with someone without feeling the need to compete and i'm not necessarily sure that I can give insight on that, Kristen, because I feel like it comes so natural, but maybe there's something that you have to add as it relates to being able to be friends with people um, who do the same things as you without feeling like it has to be this hush, 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 like secret, secret, don't tell. And of course, we both, I'm sure, can agree that it's like, you know, what God has for me is for me right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but be beyond that we all have our insecurities we all have those days when doom and gloom try to consume us and so if you have any insight to share you know what i think i've just always been totally against the crabs in a barrel mentality mm -hmm. as far as i'm concerned there are seven billion people in the world there's no way that what I'm doing and what you're doing ever have to compete with each other because there's still so many people to be impacted and affected by what we have to offer. And I think that sometimes when when people get into that space where it's competi competition over collaboration, it's usually because they're in the pond. I'm not a pond fish. I'm in the ocean. <laughs> so when you're in the pond, you're fighting for space. You're fighting because it's small. Ponds are small. It's, and it's only a little bit of water. And it's not a whole lot of um, wildlife in there for you to eat. So you're fighting for space. You're fighting to make your name known. But when you realize that you're really a big fish that's supposed to be swimming in the ocean, then you realize there's a world of possibilities. There's a world of people out there. And so for me, I've always just held on to my vision that I, I remember years ago, and I, I've been talking about this a lot lately because I know that we're pretty much here at this manifestation, like we're beginning to see it unfold. But years ago, God gave me a vision of standing outside of an elevator. And um, there was like masses, just a mass of women, just I mean, I just can't, it was just a sea of women. And we were all standing in front of this elevator. And you know, when you're waiting on the elevator yeah. to go yeah. down, you just, you're just looking up at the numbers and we're all standing there. And I remember God saying, I'm bringing the elevator down and everyone who is in position, when it's time to go up, they're going to step on and, I, and I'm taking, there's going to be a, a season of elevation. And I remember him sharing this. So in my mind, seasons change every three months or something. So I was <laughs> ready for that elevation. It didn't come then, but I do know that it is upon us now. And so um, for me, my mindset has been ever since that vision, I want to help people be in a position. I don't want Tiffany to miss the elevator. Right. I don't right. want anybody else that I'm connected to to miss this elevation. I don't want you to miss the move of God. So I'm not trying to compete. I'm trying to figure out sometimes, and to my demise, sometimes I'm trying to do too much to help other people to get them in position. Yeah. Sometimes I want them in position worse than they want themselves in position. And so um, for me, like maybe just like you, it's, it's just a natural thing. So I don't usually have to work too hard because most times I'm in competition with myself. I'm trying to be better than Kristen was yesterday. I yeah. wake up and say, God, you know what? Yesterday, I want to be better. It wasn't a bad day. But I know there's still growth for me. There's still growth for my business. There's still, still growth for my ministry. There's still growth for this mouth, okay? Because I will still cut you up sometimes. 
So I, I still got to grow. So as long as I'm in competition with myself, it's easy for me to, to push everybody else to get in competition with themselves as well. I don't know. It's just easy. So I don't even know if I answered your question. Well, no, you did answer my question. And I think though, the, the part of the issue with the perspective that people take is that social media looks like a pond, right? Because kind of like to what to your point before people are drawn to certain people at the same time and they look like they are at the impetus and it's like everybody needs to flock in that direction but just like there are seven billion people in the world there are so many people on social media mm -hmm. right there are so many people that you can potentially connect with and so you have to broaden your horizons because like you said you don't know who's waiting for the elevator or who's already on it and maybe it's just rising slowly. So you have to, this goes back to what we said initially, you have to have the discernment to know who God will have you to connect with for now or a season that is to come. Like I said before, you don't know when you're going to reap the harvest of investing into a relationship. So you really do need to consider expanding your, your, your outlook. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like the, the queen of connecting with the rising stars. I want to yes. get with the people who don't nobody know about because one, they have, you, you have value to add to the story. You, you bring something different. Mm -hmm. I don't need all the shiny and pretty stuff. Like it's, it's a lot of people out here that's just shiny and pretty. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's drawing everybody in. And every now and then they drop a, a, a bank statement or a receipt or something. And, you know, that's drawing people in. I look past all of that. I'm trying to see who is this person. The substance. Was, uh, yes, yes. Like, what is the depth of this woman? That's what I'm concerned with. And so I tend to flock to those people. You know, even with my podcast, I don't bring, like, there's some people in my network who have names, quote unquote. And I feel like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Kristen R. Harris has a name, but you know, that's a different story for a different day. But I, I don't bring those people on. I want to talk to pe people that other people would have overlooked. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like you said, hey, don't discount them. Don't discredit them. They, they're they either on their way up, they're on the elevator already, or they're about to step on whatever. So you can't, you, you got to be careful with that. Like just discounting people because they don't come with the followers or they don't have the likes or they didn't post their bank statement from September that said they made $200,000, you know, so you got to be careful with that. Yes. Yes. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And so what would you say to the woman who's listening, who is struggling to find a genuine, I like to say covenant connections online in this season? Two things. The first thing is going to sound real cliche, but I'm going to say pray about it. And um, and and not to be cliche, but I literally, so many of the connections that I have made is because that is another one of my prayers. Like God, send me some divine connections. Send me like-minded women who um, are kingdom-minded and business-driven. Like I, I was very specific about that. But the part two to my answer kind of goes into that. So I've, I've been praying that for years. And I just was sharing with Tiffany that just this morning, um, I finally started this prayer call that I was, that God had given me the idea for, because I went to him and I said, I'm looking for divine connections, women who know you and who, who are about their business, you know? And he said, well, why don't you create the network? So sometimes you got to create what you're trying to see. You know, they say build it and they will come. So maybe yeah, you yeah. have to be the architect of what you're looking for. And those people who are like-minded, those divine connections will begin to come to you because I can guarantee it's somebody else out there who's looking for what you're looking for, but maybe they don't have the courage or the leadership to step out and to and to build that thing. And so maybe you need to be the person to create these spaces. As Tiffany said, Empower Moments was a space that I created where women came into there. And in my mind, it wasn't about divine connections, but that's what happened. So you, um, you know, I would just say, pray about it. And, and if God so leads you, be the person to step out and, and create what you want to see. You know, I, I have to add to that. 
And I don't know if anybody uh, listened to the episode, but I'll make sure I link it. I interviewed Jaslyn Denise and she talked about how she prayed about having a prayer partner. And it was somebody that she knew from high school years and years ago, but they had no real connection beyond that they knew each other from high school. So I just want to add that when you pray, be open to moving on the response that God gives you because it might not look or feel the way that you expect it to look. And to your second point, that is ultimately how Coffee and Clarity started. I knew there was a need for this thing and probably God knew even more because he kept telling me and I was just like, eh. Mm -hmm. But when I finally moved, the people did show up. And also I will say, do not despise small beginnings because there was one person at Coffee and Clarity the very first time I did it. And technically she doesn't count because she was my ride. My car broke down. (laughs) I missed the bus. All of these things happened to prevent me from getting there. She was like, no, you doing this on today. She drove 30 minutes to pick me up. And then we had to drive an additional 30 minutes to get to the location. And when we got there, it was the two of us. But I showed up, I did it, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew. So if you start the prayer and God leads you to take action, just know that one woman can be the answer to your prayer. It doesn't have to be the masses, right? Do not despise small beginnings. That's one of my favorite scriptures. That's one of my favorites too, honey, because I've had some humble and lean beginnings. Yes. <laughs> but, yes. And, and maybe in the moment I was despising them. Okay. Let me just be honest. But sometimes you, when, when you get outside of those things and you're able to look back, you're like, oh, and so now I'm grateful. You know, it's so funny. I know this, hold on, I'm going off subject, but real quick. I, I was just having a moment a couple of days ago and I was like, man, God, I'm so grateful. I don't even react the way that I did when certain situations arise or when I find myself in various circumstances. So I was dealing with this situation with my business and I'm like, I don't know where this money coming from. But in the past, that probably would have took me over the edge. Like I would have been crying and down and out for three days. And I just was like, you know what, God? You gonna handle it. Like, I don't even have time to deal with this. So, you know. I tell them all the time, like, this is your business. So. So yeah, I I thank God for growth in that area. So yes, do not despise humble beginnings. I think the second part of the scripture goes on to say, for God delights to see the work begin. Yes. So you have to start, you have to start somewhere. And so all of those, all of these things that we've shared and all of the things that we've grown through, like I said, it wasn't until last year that we were both speaking at the same conference that we actually physically met. And when I tell y'all we did like the Celie and Nelly on Color Purple (laughs) (laughs) embrace, it was real. But it just, I don't know, it was, it was, it was great to meet in person, but I feel like we had done so much work, you know, prior to that it was almost like, I just, I just hadn't seen you in a month or something. Right, 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 right. Right. You know, yeah, it, it wasn't like I didn't know you. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. I was so blessed by by that um, by that opportunity. And um, hopefully it won't be another seven years before we physically see each other. Yeah, I mean, if COVID release is grip, you Jesus. know, <laughs> Jesus. That's, that's coming. That's coming. It I, is. I, it I, is. And it's perfect timing. Well, mm-hmm. I just, you know, I just pray that if nothing else, someone who is listening to this is encouraged to know that it is possible to make genuine connections. You do not have to feel like you are competing, but also just know that you can be yourself. You know, I think that just like we both share initially, we both were challenged by the moniker of ministry. We both were challenged by the responsibility of doing something you're quote unquote called to do. But if God called you to it, you know, he's going to make sure that everything else happens the way it's supposed to. You just have to do your due diligence and, you know, take the the dominion he's given you over whatever thing very seriously. And I strongly encourage you to, if you haven't been already, make sure that you take responsibility for your relationship. 
because part of the reason why we've been able to maintain and grow is because we've both, like you said, we'll text each other, we'll call, send an email, you know, I was thinking about you or this came up or you need to know about this. So being consistent in investing in the re relationship, even though, you know, you're not necessarily connecting for coffee in person. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I love, it's so funny. You just said be yourself because I literally, as you were saying, I was thinking be authentic, just be who you are. Yes. Um, don't put on airs. Don't even try, you know? And I think that that will take you so far in life, even as um, as God begins to change your environment, as he begins to shift you to new places and put you at different tables, remain who you are, be unapologetically who you are, because um, if God is bringing you to that space, he knew who you were. He, he knows exactly who you are. And so if he's bringing you to that space, he understands that you deserve to have a seat there. And so, um, don't try to change who you are or alter it to, to fit into these connections. Because if you have to do that, those are not the people that God divinely connected you to. And I just want, I just want to say one more thing before I let you get back to saving the world. And that is, um, <laughs> you know, for me, kind of like you said, for me, 2020 has exposed a lot. Right. And it's also for me been the end of some seasons and some relationships. And I'll be honest, it was challenging because I got to a place where I was like, okay, well, Lord, it's just me and you then, huh? This is how you going to do it. And, and it's, it's hard because for as many strong, you know, relationships I have, See, sometimes releasing relationships is a challenge, but if you're in that space, you really need to recognize the power of surrender because it's going to be very challenging for you to go into new relationships and, you know, meet more people authentically when you're still clinging to the pain or the fear or the resentment of releasing some of those other relationships. Yeah, that's good. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I just want to um, make sure that the people know where they can find you if they want to connect with you, listen to the podcast, all of those things. Sure, sure. So I am Kristen R. Harris. Everywhere that you probably can think to look for me, that's Kristen with an E-N, R. Harris. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all those good places. You can also visit my website at kristenrharris.com. In terms of the web, uh, I'm sorry, the podcast, God put me up on game. You can find it wherever you get your podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, we're everywhere you want to be. And yeah, I think that's it. Make sure you have your journal. Make sure you have your journal when you tune into podcast because she <laughs> definitely has all the gems and jewels to be dropped. Well, I just, I want to say, you know, and one last thing I keep saying that, but one more thing that I think is so I amazing. Knew you was that... a preacher. I knew you was a real preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what the preachers do. I'm closing. They they close <laughs> multiple times. You know. Well, well, the, usually the ones who do that always say in closing. I never said in closing <laughs> yet. Um, but I wanted to just share that you know, for as much as, as we've done together this year, I feel like marked another milestone for us in that we worked together collaboratively to help uh, Lakina publish her book. So. She worked with me in coaching. She worked with Kristen on the other side to edit and fine tune and publish her book. And it launched like at the top of the charts on Amazon. So I think that, you know, I would love, you know, as God sees fit that we can continue to help other people get to that point together. Absolutely. We need to sit down and figure out what this uh, flow chart looks like. Yes. You know? Hey, collaboration. This is, listen, it's enough for us all to eat. It's Listen, enough for everybody to eat. And, and here's the other thing about it. It feels so good to me that I could say, let me get you connected to Kristen because I know that I'm putting you and your baby in the hands of someone that's going to nurture and care and pray over mm -hmm. what is to come as opposed to, oh, I know these three people, they edit books, like call them. You know what yeah. I mean? It's something completely different when you can, for lack of a better way to say it, keep it in the family. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I appreciate it. I was, when she told me where she came from, I was like, oh, that's my girl. I love her. 
yeah. But yes, I I love it. We we got to keep that momentum going. We we got some good here. You see how that how we put that all together and came. Yes, out? yes. And I thank God for the engineer and you who can make that flow chart come to life. Like this. <laughs> yeah, that's another story for another day. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and just share with. Uh, the ladies here. I know someone will be blessed by it and, you know, I'll be in touch. Thank you for having me. It's you're always welcome. a pleasure. I love you. And I love you more. I hope you're keeping warm up there because I know it gets cold in Chi-Town. Yeah, well, you know, it's been... Well, there you have it, ladies. I pray that you are blessed by this conversation of the importance of covenant connections, collaboration over competition, and that during this season of gratitude and gratefulness that you are also celebrating friends giving along with your family and all the other things that you have to be grateful for. I would love to hear your feedback about this episode. You can of course always grab a screenshot and share it on your social tag myself at the Tiffany Huff. And if you want to, you can also tag Kristen. She is at Kristen R. Harris. I'll make sure to link all of her information in the show notes. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. I hope you have a blessed holiday week if you are celebrating and if not a blessed week anyhow. And of course, I will leave you with this. God is not going to play you. But if you are not embracing and celebrating the covenant connections that he has blessed you with, I promise you, sis, you are playing yourself. Be blessed.